So now we are starting our topic with the isochronous. We have started our journey with the data transmission and we know that there are two types of data transmission. One is the digital and analog and we have proved that digital is far better than the analog. Then afterward we have gone through the parallel and the serial communication. In the parallel communication we know that there are n bits transferred per second. And in the serial communication, only one bit is transferred per second. But yeah, in the parallel communication, we are having the n bits. So n lines are required, which is very much costly. And it is not practically possible. That's why the serial communication is more into the market. Then we have discussed the asynchronous. Asynchronous means uh, there is a uh, no as such fixed timing of data transmission. The diagram which is mentioned is the asynchronous diagram here and there are gaps and those gaps are variable means you don't know at what time i will send the data then further we have already discussed about the synchronous in the synchronous we are having the timing which is very much important and yes on the basis of timing we are having no gaps in the transmission but yes if practically say some gaps comes they are filled with the help of some ideal signal ideal zero and ones but the problem was in the synchronous communication that for the video and audio or real-time transmission it is not working so there we are discussing the next type which helps there in the real-time audio and video that is isochronous well talking about the isochronous it merge the best features of the asynchronous and the synchronous so we can say that it use both technology so we can say that isochronous use both synchronous and asynchronous modes or the methods we know that in the synchronous timing is important and in asynchronous timing is not important in the synchronous speed is very high but in the isochronous speed is very less so talking about the having both the methods obviously as the asynchronous is having zero and one as start and stop bit isochronous also have the zero and one as the start and stop bit so we can say that each character character we know that is the byte so we can say that each byte begin with start bit and we know that this start bit is zero and end with stop bit and we know that the stop bit is one now by this line we can say that it is almost similar like the ice asynchronous but it is not you can see there the diagram which i am mentioning is totally same as the asynchronous but there is some difference i will tell you so assume that there is a sender and there is a receiver now the message if we want to send so message is called the data so this is the data and data is having the start bit as zero and stop bit as one so start and stop bit you know that already we have discussed in the asynchronous that whenever i am sending some data i will just first send zero so receiver knows that there is some data is coming so data is received after that i am sending one then afterward receiver know that the data is now over so the similarly this is the data which is going and this is the stop bit afterward again this is the start bit data is going and stop bit similarly start bit data and stop it start bit and data is coming this way there is one thing which is very much important last time we have discussed in the asynchronous communication that there are some gaps so these are the gaps there in the isochronous also these are the gaps but you know that in the asynchronous communication those gaps were variable means once i send one character afterward 
you don't know if you are a receiver you don't know maybe after one day i will send the next packet maybe after one minute i will send so you don't know you are waiting but here in the isochronous we are having these gaps are fixed so these gaps are the fixed so fixed gaps are there so all the gaps which are present these are fixed means once i send a zero start bit then the data then the stop bit i have already shown you that after 5 minutes i will send the next packet so you are you are remain free for 5 minutes then after 5 minutes you are become active by receiving my zero message and again sending so every 5 minutes you are getting the message so you can already assume once we are having the fixed gaps so the speed will be slight faster than the asynchronous so first we can say that the gaps between characters are fixed so you know that this one is the one character going with trailing and the heading 0 and 1 this is another character going with 0 and 1 again one more character is going and again this more character is coming so these gaps which i have already mentioned these gaps are fixed so all the gaps between the characters are the fixed so this is the isochronous which is having the both the features of asynchronous and the synchronous communication now we are going to the applications means what are the real time uses of the isochronous so now we are talking about the applications applications means where we are going to use the isochronous so applications of isochronous well the first application which i can say it is having the high rate of transmission then asynchronous well we know that asynchronous and synchronous are having their own benefits as well as the problems so isochronous is somewhere in between in asynchronous we are having problem of the speed but the synchronous is very having very high speed in asynchronous there is one benefit that we are having the gaps gaps means whenever i want i can send the data it is not like i am sending the ideal signals but in the synchronous i am sending the ideal signal unnecessarily so that is also the difference so here in the isochronous we know that gaps are fixed you know that after 5 minutes every 5 minutes i am sending the data and this is not like that you will wait for one day or two day because it is variable so as the gaps are fixed that's why the asynchronous is having the isochronous is having the benefits over the asynchronous means the speed of isochronous is much faster than the asynchronous so that is the benefit and also retain advantages of asynchronous so it is saying that although the speed is better in isochronous but also the advantages of asynchronous are retained means those start and stop bit are still there if i talk about the data sending means i am sending the data to you so i will send with the start and stop bit same as the asynchronous but the speed is much better so that is the advantage of isochronous now talking about the examples examples means where we can use that isochronous so now we are going to discuss now i'm taking few examples and with the help of those examples you will get to know where we can use the isochronous so the first example i am taking is real time audio and video and second example i am opting is tv now these two examples are very much related because in both the ways we are having the videos to be transmitted in real time audio and video and the tv now what just remember one thing in many of the earlier classes we have seen that there was a book and there were so many images 
and we just ran the book very fast means we are folding all the pages very fast and it looks like that person is moving but actually it was the images so the video is nothing but the combination of images there are multiple images present maybe thousand images and those thousand images we are running at the fast speed so that it looks like the video so video recording in the digital camera is like it is capturing many photos together and they run at a constant speed then it shows us the video so what is important all the images running at the constant speed constant speed means you take out all the images running at the fixed time again modify all the images running at the fixed gaps so can you see that it is the advantage of isochronous so i will write one more line to make you understand that this is the line which is in supporting of all images broadcast at broadcast means sent to every people just like the television we are sending uh, the tv show to everyone so it is called the broadcast so images broadcast at rate of 30 images per second so this thing you already know in your mobile phones also you have seen this option just like you want to shoot the video on this particular these images per second or all and must be viewed at same rate so this thing is important means video shooting is nothing but the combination of images these images are shooted at the constant speed means let us suppose that 30 images should be shooted on particular one second and our human eyes are also watching those images 30 images on a second then we will see that is a video it actually it is not a video video is a combination of the images so that is the advantage of the technology that uh, we are having that human eye is making fool right so what is that this is taken from the isochronous so yes everybody was failed there only isochronous is working so that why that's why the isochronous is very much important so talking about real time audio and video and tv isochronous is there because there are fixed gaps and on the fixed gaps all the images are presented to the human eye and they looks like the video